as we have been discussing that is bhagavad gita not as a religious text technically called as dharma shastra but is a moksha shastra being moksha shastra means it teaches us not only what is the purpose of our life also who are we so when it talks about one's own self about me not as an individual not with my likes and dislikes with my preferences or you can say with my packages but i am as i am interestingly me is always confused when me is confused means i am confused <laughs> now my confusion appears to be reality and the way i am confused accordingly i get attached not only i get attached i get attracted also towards other confusion that is related to my confusion as they say same words fuck together as they fly together so also my confusion this is called law of attraction here bhagavad gita is mainly meant for to resolve one's own confusion and interestingly here not who who listens to bhagavad gita but how you listen to that matters remember this is the background during war time when arjuna a great archer that we discussed in the last class he was born to fight he grew up to fight in fact he did all his life penance and all sort of things just to fight nothing not for anything so his aim was only to fight as a warrior but when the right moment came when he was supposed to fight he started withdrawing out of confusion but he presented that confusion as a compassion interesting okay have you not observed yourself how you present your confusion as a compassion because you don't accept your confusion so you want to express your generosity greatness humility kindness and all sort of qualities to others to impress and of course to tell a lie to yourself and of course also not also did it but interestingly even though the message of bhagavad gita is one but the effect the impact of this teaching differs from person to person how even though the seed is same it depends upon where you are putting it 
if the land is not fertile if the land is not ready if the land is not prepared please understand it is not the mistake of the seed it is the mistake of the land so also the teaching is maybe the same same as the seed but it depends upon the person how the person listens to why i use this word as i told you earlier the background of this bhagavad gita is this which also we will see the war is declared now arjuna on one side called pandavas five brothers fighting for justice other side 100 brothers they are fighting for their rights okay maintaining their rights this is our right when just five people fighting for their for the justice not even if you know their rights okay for the justice there is a cause behind it now this 100 fellows are fighting for rights and when people starts fighting for the rights like you no know, we have would you know this human rights members this that you understand animal activists you know what better not to talk so when you start fighting for rights don't worry you will attract a given number of people those who will have the same interest that is how all these activists flourish okay whether they bring result or not that i don't know i have not seen it but definitely those who are activist those who fight for rights human rights okay few days back i saw in the facebook uh, some day was there you know uh, women empowerment day we will not allowed to be blah 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 you understand hey, ridiculous that means those who write or those who took this logo and all these things that means something is wrong with you people it's really not acceptable that means you are showing to the society that you have gone through some tough time or you are vulnerable however that's just side topic coming back to the point that any time you fight for your rights whether for your country for any purpose any rights okay or gender or what not same type of people those who have the same sort of interest they will join with you and that is how please understand duryodhana could convince many people a huge army was with duryodhana huge whereas the one who started fighting our subject matter arjuna justice only few people which will be seeing in the bhagavad gita itself don't worry as it comes just i am trying to give you the background psychologically and interestingly because he was trying to fight for justice and moreover the lord himself was with him still he was completely confused because when confusion comes and why confusion comes remember when your past memory when your habits when your way of thinking takes over the present moment that time you become confused repeating when your past memories your habits your way of thinking which includes your information and what not takes so the present moment becomes stronger than the present moment that time you are confused and whoever the person may be 
and here the case is arjuna the best among all the human beings because today what we are dreaming or we cannot dream that he was having so what is today dream that was his reality that's why he represents the human being best of the human being now interestingly also we need to observe we need to understand this point carefully this arjuna prepared himself to fight but right time because of the confusion he could not fight because he could not fight but he said he does not want to fight try to understand this point when you don't please understand you could not do what you present how you talk i don't want to do hey you don't want to do or you could not do do you see the difference very conveniently you try to highlight you try to present that i don't want to do and on the top of it you try to justify your activities like you know the best example is what who is in the room answer comes from the room i have not taken banana i didn't ask who what did you do what are you doing what are you not doing just out of curiosity because some sound came hey, who is in the room the person says from the room i have not taken banana so you yourself talk you yourself establish that you have taken banana so how it happens this is a very nice example same way when you vlaho when you say i don't want exactly expresses that you could not you cannot both you could not and you cannot because you could not cannot because so much ego so much ego means your confusion again and you are under the spell of your confusion you say i don't i don't want to do how here the background says interestingly this is how happened as i said bhagavad gita was the first telecast in the world if we look back it must have been done more than 3000 year old the war happened physically that's just few hundred kilometers away from new delhi of india towards north the place is called kurukshetra comes under haryana state it's a beautiful place to go and see the place there is a monument there is a tree also the tree actually where it is being believed that in that war field so they are the chariot of arjuna and krishna was parked and he gave the discourse and interestingly lot of weapons are being found in that locality which goes dated back to minimum 300 so, uh, sorry 3000 year old lot of weapons are being discovered now from the earth and of course the description of the mahabharata a great epic a great itihasa history book the distance whatever is being mentioned all the description is matching geographically present day so that's why we consider as itihasa as history not epic how to come back to our topic that when a person starts fighting for right must have been brought up by a blind person <laughs> okay please understand each statement i am weighing it very carefully 
if a person is fighting for rights must have been brought up by blind person or he is a blind he or she is a blind so when i say blind that means again completely confused and thinks that i am perfectly okay number 1 number 2 the person always wants to get or demand what is his or her birth right that's why all the right activists those who fight for rights they never talk what they should do always they demand what country should do what government should do what others should do you understand any human activist animal activist human activist just observe them only they highlight what others should do they only look for their rights and of course in their pocket their name fame and money everything should go to their pocket that's another point okay <laughs> so this has become nowadays profession because i have problem is with those who listen to me this any uh, activist they will kill me okay i hope none of you are there even if you are there this is your problem not my problem okay this is my truth <laughs> however coming back here here interestingly duryodhana father was a blind person he was a king shortly i am trying to say how the story goes let me quickly narrate the story actually this the one who is fighting for rights called duryodhana his father was elder person as per the rule in a family elder person youngest eldest person will become prince and later on will become king but unfortunately he was blind and as per the rule we have very clear picture anybody and everybody cannot become king that was our vedic culture if we extend the same thing anybody and everybody cannot be politician or leader political leader not supposed to but now did what father was politician somehow now son is a politician or daughter is a politician it doesn't work so in order to become a king we have 24 characteristics and moreover physically the person should not have any deformities forget about mental deformities okay <laughs> now it is most of the leader have mental deformities okay <laughs> so no physical deformities no men forget let us not talk about mental deformities and not only that the king should look like a king not like a beggar okay that's why we have expression hey you are behaving like a king you are moving like a king we have expression all over world every languages and here unfortunately this the father of the one who is writing for uh, sorry, fighting for justice sorry fighting for the rights called duryodhana his father was blind being eldest so by default the let us say kingdom came or fall fell on the soldier of a younger brother called pandu who happens to be the father of arjuna who is fighting for justice just understand these two concept and interestingly because of some reason or other let me not get into the pandu was a great king and he made a mistake by unknowingly that he put the arrow so one one rishi and his wife was killed and because of that reason 
he decided that he should go to the forest and live his life differently because he was such a great person guys i have made a mistake because he said very nicely a king gives justice to others if the king makes mistake who should give justice nobody better i should do decide for myself that's why he left as per the rule no throne should be empty and interestingly this hastinapura this kingdom throne was empty for a long time there is also history behind it let me not get into it mahavarta is a very great thing to understand just i am trying to tell you if anybody wants to study psychology the best book in the world that i have come across ever best book on psychology is called mahabharata however coming back finally this arjuna if you look at oh, arjuna's father when he left then by default they made this dhritarashtra the blind person as called you know representative of king not king in fact there is a proper ritual called abhishekam for a dhritarashtra abhishekam was not done at all just said okay you are nominated let us say nominated king only the crown was handed over that's all but unfortunately the younger brother who went to the jungle forest for penance he passed away in the forest because he passed away dhrutarashtra was no more a nominated king became permanent king now the rule is here being joint family who will be the eldest son in that family has to get has to get the chance of becoming the king number 1 and interestingly the one who died his son became the eldest called yudhishthira those five brothers among them but another point also happened equally when duryodhana was born this 100 brothers the eldest one in fact there was lot of discussion that this boy will be dangerous for the society however the father was blind he said no i want my child how let us not get into that conflict there is another way of looking at this text now the fight started here technically being a representative being a nominated king he is supposed to hand over the throne to the eldest who happens to be the youngest brother's son in a joint family but he did not want he thought i am king the kingdom should go to my child even if he is not ready or he is not fit for it now duryodhana the one who is fighting for rights he consider my father is a king it is my birth right to become king now the arjuna group they are fighting for the justice say this is a rule you cannot de deviate the rule there is something called dharma so how can you deviate the rule for your sake so okay lot of struggle lot of negotiation let not let us not get into now this arjuna is fighting for justice can you see the understanding how the psychological it is being presented because i have to talk to you people keeping psychology in my mind now when these two started fighting definitely krishna had to support justice at the same time he handed over is very clever okay <laughs> he handed over 
all his armies for rights okay he stood alone with justice but he handed over all his armies huge army for rights means make a noise okay continue with your noise <laughs> but i am not with you and when this started the war let us say started the author of this called vyasa who is called second krishna such a great personality who has codified vedas and not only that who is the author of all puranas 18 puranas and this mahabharata called itihasa he had a vision beforehand he knew what is going to happen in fact he had that sort of siddhi that sort of accomplishment that he could see what is happening this is called live telecast okay coming this point and he also tried his level best to convince the blind king a hey, avoid the war things are not going to go in your favor as usual he did not listen to then he said okay being a blind person do you want to see the destruction i can give you that much power you can see the war as you know the one who is blind never wants to open the eyes have you not observed here blind means nothing confusion when you have delusion would you like to open your eyes definitely not you are comfortable with your darkness means with your own way of thinking so you will never like the light you will go round round you are caught in your web thinking web you will never come out of it so even though the eyes the vision was being given by vyasa acharya but the blind person did not because he is very happy with his blindness with his confusion look at yourself okay then finally said okay but you should listen to okay okay no problem my minister can be given this vision this power let him report to me and who is a minister interesting that background also you should understand here is that sanjay uvach we'll see this is the first will come sanjay said the minister and who is this sanjay who is a minister actually he was not supposed to be a minister he was just a charioteer because the real minister named called vidura he resigned before war he resigned he said i don't want to be a minister because he tried all his level best to stop the war when nothing worked he said i don't want to be a minister anymore so because the right person was not a minister a charioteer was promoted by this blind person to become minister you understand that's why i always says the first chapter of bhagavad gita which is nothing but a blavering of arjuna in short blavering of a confused person also can be looked at as that book on let us say management how to handle your immediate boss <laughs> because of whose grace even though you don't deserve minister post <laughs> being a charioteer but because your boss has helped you or boss has promoted you then how to handle the boss without getting into conflict if we try to look at the first chapter actually it is not a first chapter is not teaching at all we don't consider as bhagavad gita okay but it is a preparation for the teaching so that's why we can look at also quickly sometimes that how to handle your immediate boss so that immediate boss can be in the office also it can be in your home okay if for man home minister for woman finance minister 
sometimes for a man also both home minister and finance minister okay <laughs> So, however, here it says beautifully that how, oh, already I have taken time. I should stop it here. So, how one should look at one's own conclusion. And interestingly, this is Sanjay, a great charioteer who was promoted as a minister, start seeing what is happening in the war field. And while seeing is telecasting, let us say he cannot telecast, audio cast. He is seeing from a distance, audio casting. And interestingly, Hanuman, a great devotee of Lord Rama, who happens to be previous era, which will be like, you no, know, another 5,000 years before, he was also listening to Bhagavad Gita because he was on the top of the chariot to protect. He was also equally listening to Bhagavad Gita. But remember, if we observe this very carefully, when Lord Krishna is talking to Arjuna, Arjuna could change himself. But when Sanjaya started talking or reporting rather to Dhutarashtra, nothing happened to Dhutarashtra. That means what? The seed is the same but the land is not ready. The teaching is same, but adhikaritvam, the preparedness of the students, not there. That's why here you need to spend time to make yourself prepared. Then only you will see the Gita seed will start germinating. More of it we'll see tomorrow. Please close your eyes. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shant Shant Shanti Thank you all of you.